Okay, so the title of this project is going to be called Making a Simple Open World Game. Um, for those of you who already have a project open already and you named it what you wanted to name it as I taught you guys in the last tutorial, um, we are going to begin and we're going to continue from where we stopped, alright? And the first thing I want you guys to do is, um, there was, we stopped somewhere in the last tutorial and I believe someone really stopped there as well. First thing I'm going to do is that we are going to come to our um, level, level one, all right, system manager, okay, and click on the edit button. Um, first thing I want you guys to do is to remove this add component, okay, because it's going to give you guys um, a debug error, all right, it's going to tell you something is wrong, something is wrong whenever you want to play the game. And uh, you might not be aware of this, but let me just show you guys. As you can see, we're in a post state right now. That's because this add component isn't adding any component to any game object, all right? Any game object on the um, hierarchy. Um, just to show you guys, this is what it says, all right? And sometimes these debugs are pretty clear and straight to the point. So, um, and um, sometimes you get something like this, an error like this, telling you that there is an issue. And once you click, thanks to Playmaker, once you click on this, it takes you to where the issue is. Um, and then you can try to fix it, okay? So what we're going to do for this case is because since we don't need the add component um, function right now, we're just going to remove it, okay? Okay, so now let's begin. Um, um, first of all, we're going to get um, the things we're going to need for this game tutorial, okay? We need to make a game, an open world game. So let's think. What do we need for an open world game? What can we get? You guys can think of something. Think of something. We need things like um, pictures. We need things like uh, pictures, by the way, for UI. We need things like also pictures for textures. We need things like Photoshop as well. We need um, an audio software. If you have an audio software, we need things like recorder if you want to record your own audios. And then we have things like um, we need other other 3D models. Okay. Um, this tutorial, I'm not going to be covering the making of actual 3D models because that's a different um, field of my field, okay? And that's also going to take time that we won't be able to make this game within one hour. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a very simple and fast game. And to begin that, let's first of all save this scene. After removing your add component, save this scene, okay? And let's open a new scene. We're going to name this scene... <coughs> I'm going to name this scene level one, all right? Um, click on this, by the way, and then just Control S, Control S. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to name this level one, or city one, or town one, or village one, whatever you want to name it. Okay. And now we've done this. Let's create a ground for our terrain. Alright, we don't really need to use the terrain board. I'm going to use the terrain in this video so you guys can learn how to work with terrains as well. So now let's right click as usual to read the game object terrain. I'm trying to save time, so I'm trying to reduce how I explain. So now this terrain is basically what you, you use in most games. Okay, we have terrain and we have plane. Some people use plane, but that the usage of plane, um usage of plane is quite limited when it comes to plane and terrain you can use a plane as a terrain as well but that's if you're working on a really really small area kind of like a 5 uh, 5v5 kind of game where shooter game stuff like that you could use plane but when you have a terrain and you want to put in things like vegetation and so on using a plane wouldn't would, would really give you that uh, much flexibility but yeah you could use a plane um, you just want to have it, a static view of a location of an, or of an area that helps you. But when you talk about procedure, procedural um, um, terrain, procedural world, use things like terrain. Okay, when we talk about procedure, procedural, we are trying to say um, we expect terrain to change over time, for example, erosion and, st and dust and stuff like that. I get with um, decays as well. So, you use things like terrain for that. And then, once again, um, you could use plane, but for this, we're going to be using terrain. All right, so let's talk about the terrain. Okay, we have the um, settings here. These are the main settings. We have the stamp terrain settings. This is to add 
another terrain to the terrain that's already here which you just click um the add button and then you see all these boxes but once you once you um see all these boxes you click on this you look for um what they tell you to do is you click the edges to create um a terrain so you just look for the edge of the place you want to create the terrain to and then it creates that for you uh, let me see if it's working yes um they didn't tell you so you just simply click i get me so i have my neighboring terrain right now but this is too much for what i'm working on all right so this by the way this is also this is what we call the sculpt the sculpting tool for those of you that work on 3d models this is the sculpting tool we use in terrain and you can get the feature on plane all right you can get it on plane and this is where um terrain gives you the advantage and of course you can make your terrain in 3d models like blender and stuff like that and then import it into this place that is actually more optimized but you can't change what is already made right that's the way made and decided but yeah in unity this terrain is kind of like a paper that you can mold into your own satisfaction all right this terrain is like a paper that you can squeeze you can fold you can do whatever you want to do to it so that was it all right so this sculpting tools we have the several things you could do with it all right you can come here and check this later they all simply say what they are they are for but I might just state out this for you set height and raise her and raise terrain raising terrain has no limit all right has no limit to how far you can raise the terrain to. When you talk about set height, you raise the terrain to a certain height, okay? A certain height defined by your height. Let's say you want to raise it up to 10, to 12. You raise it up till it gets to 12, okay? For example, um, for example, let's just keep on raising this place. It can go pretty hard and we're trying to save time. Let's not do that. So, um, you know, we have the tree section. This is where you, you basically paint your trees. And um, let me just show you this. This is where you basically paint your trees. Let's just put this to zero. Um, flattened tiles. All right. This is where you add all your all your trees, your tree models. This is where you put them. Your your grasses, vegetation. This is where you put them. All right. And then let's go to the, um the important place. The place I like to go when I want to do optimization. By the way, I've been speaking fast. I noticed that. So let me let me slow down my my voice because not everyone is good with English. Okay, so now let's continue. <laughs> All right, guys, are you ready? Good. So this is where I like to come to when it comes to optimization. And for this tutorial, we are planning on making a very small environment. All right, a very small area for just um this level. By the way, we're going to be making two different levels, two to three different levels actually um and then let's just make this fast all right let's reduce this to five maybe oh um, maybe ten ten okay and um ten okay i mean this is not usually usually use you don't really need this actually 600 is kind of too much in fact um let's just put it at 10 for now okay to be safe maybe you have a very very tall building let's give it at 20. so yep we are down to this okay this might look small but this is actually pretty big so we'll come back to this again but let's first of all go to somewhere that i would like to show you guys which is um click on your windows the asset store all right this is the asset store all right um click search online you didn't open a new window for you this is what we call unity asset store we call this unity asset store this is where you can come to get free free assets for your game all right we have so many things here we have some audios look at this everything is here and you have a lot of free you can check the ones for free all right just search and then filter it to be free for example i'm going to search um um textures okay textures once it clicks that you come to the um 2d textures are 2d because they are pictures right good then um you just simply drag this all the way to zero, right? Or you just click the free button, right? And then it brings you several collections, okay? But you can get this asset if you don't have an account in Unity. So you have to create an account, and that's why Unity was important, all right? And we did that step in the last tutorial. So you get an account first, so you can be able to log into their Unity asset store and add this to your asset, okay? And when you add this to your asset, then you would be able to you can download it from the browser itself it's going to be added to your asset and then you have to come to your package manager 
all right um the package managers by default unity has its own um unity registry where um you can by default install some needed or um, recommended um assets needed for you to make your games and these are them right we have the types like adaptive performance um addressables advice um, advertisement etc right um we're not going to talk about all this right now in this tutorial we're trying to save time so let's come to okay go to my asset all right that's where the texture you do add it to your asset is going to be and for me i'm going to just search i think i should have some textures yeah i don't know but i should have some textures no texture maybe materials um i need some kind of texture 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 prepare prepare ground mm, okay let's get that one uh material nope uh, fine to prepare one no oh, fuck no there isn't sterilized style texture no there isn't much actually there isn't much textures here actually Mm. Should I import this? Okay, this is quite much. But I think it has the textures I need. Alright, so what is important? Alright, let's uh let me show you guys some other things. Alright, um, let's go to our browser. Open your browser. Let's see you. Let's add the you've got in your texture now. Alright, and now I want to show you guys a place that I like to get um two D buildings from. Alright, uh, which is called the Sketch Fab. I like to get models from here. Right, so uh, if it's um, a building, if it's a car you want to look for, search for it, yeah, and then just stick download it. All right, and then once you've downloaded it, let's as you downloaded it. By the way, take notes when downloading a model from the internet, don't download OBJ. Sometimes you can, um, if you're really good with um, models, importing all models into Unity, you can walk around this. All right, I do this sometimes. And that will also help you, okay? Um, sometimes these sketch fab models, their OBJ format is usually really good, and you can easily put in the um, textures back. But normally, what we do, what we use in um, Unity, we simply use FBS, okay? Just look for one of them that have FBS format, and then you um, install. You don't use Blend. You have to have Blender open before you can then try to export it for. Um, for fbx for unity so you look for fbx format all right i'm trying to look for an fbx format i'm not seeing it right now okay good this is um this is what we talk about fbx format all right this would do the job and if you save your time you can just import it straight into unity but when you import it into unity there's still some tricks you need to do which i will show you guys all right so um um now that i've talked about this um this thing with you this site with you let's talk about getting png pictures all right you can png pictures png textures whatever we want but let's start with png pictures all right the reason why i'm asking for png pictures is because i want to show you guys the importance of um let's try png tree the importance of this png pictures okay the importance of PNG pictures is because this enables you to add this to your UI. For example, this looks cool, but because of this watermark, of course, you can edit it and you know this watermark, and it won't be there. But let's look for something else. Mm, maybe this. Oh, of course, they have to just do this, so now I'm not going to do that. I don't have the time for that. Mm, let's see, free pick. Let's see if you're actually free. Um, Uh -huh, sorry i just had some interruption so let's continue we were in this website trying to get a png kind of picture and how can let's maybe this you know what i'm just going to like all oh, this is so difficult to find why is it so difficult to find something mm, let's hope this is not that difficult uh, okay let's use this Dimensions, dot PNG. It takes just so hard to get a PNG picture. Mm, oops. Like, 
Oh my, just download it. Fucking damn pic picture. This is what's going on right now. Things like this, people. You know what? Just scroll it, scroll it. I'm just going to go to the beginning of this again and just do something else. Images like um, Google should has have his. Um, by the way, to differentiate PNG pictures, this when you say a background like this, that usually PNG pictures. All right, there are pictures that you can, and although it's not always like this, just make sure you check and you see PNG as uh, the format. All right, you see PNG as the format. So I'm going to click this, view this one more time. Mm, download PNG. This looks more cooler. No, don't worry. Let's see if we can get it from here. Share image as. Uh, JPG, not the JPG by the way. Let's see if we can get a PNG. Mm. Okay, let's see this one. The image as PNG. This is a PNG image, all right? It's transparent background, so you can use it. Let's just save that and let's go all the way back. Let's. I've shown you guys how to get PNG pictures, all right? They have websites that are there for free. You can do the need. But I'm trying to save time not to go through all that. So you guys register your account. They are free guys. Register your account. Use them for your games. They are really helpful. Now we've talked about PNG pictures. Let's talk about audios, videos, other pictures. We have what we call free stock, okay? It's free stock. Um or sound, free stock sound, okay. These free stock sounds are sounds that you can use for free without having any copyrights, okay? I don't use free sounds, don't use free sound guys. They are they are bad. Um they always give they always make things terrible for you. This is where I this is the place I come to nowadays to make get my sound. So you can just search for a sound that you like and um start search for a sound you like and then use it, okay. It's all free. All you have to do is just download it. All right. Um, please, you can try to, you can try to, um, credit the people that made this some um, sounds, pictures, whatever it is. All right. So now we've talked about that. Let's talk about recording. Sometimes I do record. I do record my own voice, like a project I'm working on right now. I do record my own voice in there. And then I just do some editing with sound editor, um, audio editor, and then um, the audio is good to go. So now we've talked about recorder. You can re just to show you that you record your own sounds as well sometimes, and voice record as well. I use um, for sounds. I use what we call Adobe Audition for editing of sounds. Okay, uh, it's very it's pretty simple and um, stress stress free. Kind of straightforward and it's kind of like you're working on actual video so i say it really helpful and it's lightweight as well very easy to use so now we've talked about um audition adobe audition we've talked about audios we've talked about recording let's now go into making our games and let's assume that you also have your models now ready okay so now let's now go down to the main task for today all right, so now that we've done this, we're getting ready, guys. Come on, now is now the most exciting part. The excitement has just begun. All right, now let's just go back to Unity. Oh, by the way, I haven't import, uh, imported this into my my project. I'm just going to pause the video, import this, and then we'll continue. Okay, for those of you that also want to try and get this, we call this Terrain Sample Asset Pack. It's for free. All right, you can get it on Asset Store for free. Let me just show you guys. Mm. All right, Terrain Asset Packs for free again. Terrain Asset. All right, you guys can see it here already it's for free. You can see it here. You just add it to your asset and you're good to go. So once you've done that, you call me again as well. You just search for Terrain. I want to bring this up this is very important for you guys it's also a it's also unity's recommended terrain sample asset pack it has everything you need textures and stuff like that so if you're looking for textures for your terrain you don't need to just use this terrains um assets for your terrain and everything is good to go so i'm going to pause this video and import this into unity and when i'm done importing it i'm going to resume and then we'll continue from there all right 
okay now we are back i believe i can now exit this uh all right let's just add one more thing um let's just add this guy mm, yeah let's just add this guy all right so i'm just going to add this guy and we'll continue from there might take a while since it's hdr compressing something so i'm just going to pause again and resume again all right so that has been imported if you want to get the hdr sky as well you just go to the asset store free hdr sky and you will get it all right so now i'm done with that um imported that just clear out this by the way you might you might find this a couple of times but don't be a, a lot about it this is what we call red warning not deep red warning i talked about this in my last tutorial we have the deep red we have the red so this is just a red you can clear them you can clear this off but this was a deep red a deep red does a deep red prevents you from actually playing the game and we had to we had to either change the level or remove what was causing this error for the game to be able to play so now that all that has been fixed we can clear this and there will be no issue so we have our terrain all right um we're going to go into a lot of work right now this might get messy but um please try to hang in there and just follow through so we want to start this is our first city okay let's see this is where we want the player to appear in all right um i'm going to make this into two different um two different levels okay we're going to have a a i want to make a house and a bank okay so in this terrain uh, I'm going to put this. I'm going to paint this there right now. Okay, I want it to be kind of like um, scenery. So let's begin. Make sure you're paying attention to where I'm going. All right. Edit terrain layers. Create layer. Sometimes you can just add layer. I think this sample asset has its own layers. So you could check, for example, we have grass. Check the grass you want before you import this, all right? And I'm going to import this one. You can see it's by default, the first texture, the first terrain, the first terrain layer or texture on your painting or um, this thing painting or um, inventory or let's call it painting inventory here yeah, would be the one to appear on your terrain now that this has happened we are going to now start painting into my terrain i'm going to create layer for this next one so you guys can know in case you have a texture a 2d texture that you would like to convert into a material for your terrain all you have to do is just look for it we need to look for sand okay i believe i have sand somewhere here all right sand and now that i clicked on it unity simply unity simply made the sand for me but there is another thing to take note of is <coughs> when making a terrain a texture for your terrain um unity by default just helps you make your texture for your terrain all right but they don't help you make your normal map or your max map and your normal map and your max map they usually help you to add more details to your terrain if we go if we go closer to this uh, let me just put this if we go closer to this you can look at this terrain all right it looks a little bit um even though we've done nothing it looks kind of um detailed in a way and that's because it has a normal map and a max map i could decide to scale this to a scale of theory and look what it gives me all right you can see more details are popping out of the terrain but let's just put it maybe since there's more terrain we can put it to two all right, you can put it to three, you can put it to ten, depending on your system's performance. But take note of performance overall when you're making your game. So, anyways, by the way, people don't really pay that much attention to terrains, but because you're going to have grasses, trees, and then so they don't they won't really know what happened to the floor. Are you getting me? So you don't really need to pay more attention to this. But I'm going to leave it on two. And since we don't have a no map or max map for this it will still work of course by the way let's use the brush size for now it will still work um but then 
it won't look that realistic i get it no that realistic so we're just going to do something like this we're going to click add layer let's see if we have a sand layer we have a sand terrain layer already and it has its max map normal map so we're just going to delete this one all right edit terrain layers remove layer that's when we can delete it so all right so now to begin painting okay i'm going to increase the brush one more time take note of where i go mm, point point five around yes, around okay so you can notice the, the difference now in the two right you can see this looks more detailed let's go one more time again add the uh, new layer let me see this one all right now if you take a look at these two it looks like nothing actually changes right but you're wrong if you noticed you're kind of wrong if you take a deeper look into this two, you notice that something did change for example this has no normal map now i'm going to show you where this changes it kind of affects both because um this is strange well the reason why i believe the reason why i affected both is because um they're kind of for both all right yeah sorry i was using the same i was using the same um texture so you can see the difference right the reason why it's important to have a max map and a normal map it's quite important as well to know that it's quite important to not make mistakes when you're doing a max map and a normal map Making a mistake would make your max map and normal map look like it's not like it didn't really do much of your work and going to make your texture look bad. So you can see this this was an actual done well done job, alright? You can see that with the max map and the normal map we were able to get this kind of nice looking sand that looks realistic. But for this it's just plain. I get it, it's just plain, there's nothing there that is it doesn't look realistic at all. But for some time, in some cases at times we might just need something like this that is just plain. Are you getting it? And why in some cases it might sound like this that the sand is much. For example, now I won't be needing such sand for the terrain I want to work on. I just need something plain. Alright. So I'm going to like clear this off and um use this um texture because I just want something plain. For you guys, if you want to add details to your terrain, that's fine. If you want to make it look realistic, that's fine, no issue so i'm going to begin all right so i just want for example i just want to draw by the way to draw to draw your terrain left click i want to draw a straight line on the terrain all right nothing special maybe just um draw this out a little bit okay now that that is done all right so you notice this kind of um it's too sharp all right it's too sharp let's kind of make it let's make this place a little bit um rough to do that we're going to look for a nice brush reduce the opacity and you can then work on doing something like this like I get it like 3D, to like make it look like it's going in, okay? And you can also use this brush as well, this light feather, it also gives you that effect that you need. Are you getting it? also gives you the, the effects you need. So it's all about you just doing some additional work on all this and then you can get what i tried to do here was out i tried to mix the sand with um with the grass okay so it looks like the sand is making sense for the sand to actually spread into the grass okay but it doesn't make sense for the grass to spread into the sand because the sand is the one that is more looseless all right the grass is more solid than the sand in a way so the sand is the one that can more can spread due to wind or air so you think about all these kind of things as well during your design to make things realistic okay so let's just keep this as my terrain all right mm, maybe just buckle up some more areas to like make it because all right so we have this all right so i'm going to bring in my buildings now because i didn't bring them in the first place uh to bring them in i'm just going to open um my downloads and i'm going to drag them in 
we, well, before I do that, I'm going to first of all extract these two um, files. All right, we have Anton House. Okay, let's extract for this as well. All right, so we have this. I believe that the source, okay, the source is in compressed as well. This is for the Anton House, English House source. All right, so we are good to go. Take note, if you also got your models from Sketchfab like me, always make, sh make sure you um, extract it first. You extract these files before you put them into Unity because Unity doesn't support the extracting, all right? So you won't be able to use the files if you are, uh, you'll be able to use the files if you don't extract them. All right, so I think I added them already, right, haven't I? Okay, I didn't add them. All right, let's just do that again. Come on, come on, come on. No time, no time, no time. 20 more minutes, 20 more minutes. Or oh, 30 rather. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, be fast, be fast, be fast. All right, so that is done. Um, I'm coming, let me just look, do something with pick and be back. All right, so I'm back. Um, and my videos are in. So, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Okay. Oh, by the way, I had a rock here. I once had a rock here, so maybe I could decide to add the rocks as a part of additional detail. Just sometimes you have to resize some stuff to very low scale. Mm, resize, resize, resize. Bring it in. Okay. That's my rock. Okay, just raise it up a little bit. I'm, I'm too fast here. Yeah? Oh, come on. You got to be kidding me. From time to time, um, I'm going to give you guys a video. By the way, a, I'm recommending you a. I'm going to recommend you a YouTube channel, all right? At the end of this tutorial, for you guys to learn more and further ahead of the class, okay? And then when you guys are done learning from there, we're going to continue our tutorial, and then I'm going to be expecting you guys to be very familiar with. Um, going to be expecting you guys to be very familiar with. Playmaker by then, all right, so we can actually go into a serious project, all right, together. So, by the way, don't always forget to save, always save because Unity has this kind of stupidity where they like to um, crash your doc, your project rather, and everything you've done so far without saving is going to make everything look um, messy. It's going to make you regret actually. So, let's go to my actual house, all right. If you, if you download it from Sketchfab like me, come to your materials, all right? Extra texture, just select the folder, all right? So you can select whichever folder you want to select, all right? But I'm going to be selecting the actual, it's folder itself. Unity has finally made it easier for me. For me. But the previous Unity is you have to select the folder yourself or create a new folder, all right? But since now they made it that each texture and materials you want to extract to be extracted into its own folder, the folder of the asset you downloaded from wherever you got it from. So I'm going to extract materials as well. This is a step you have to do in all models you you download from Sketchfab. Some other areas like Blender from Blender from um, 3D Max and um, so, so on might require something different. But overall, the primary way we usually do it is that we create a folder inside the asset folder, okay? Inside the file folder, the file that you imported into it, you create a folder for the file, put the file inside, and then you create a folder for the materials inside that file folder. And then you put the material inside. So now this is done for me already. Add some is the file I imported into Unity, the asset I imported into Unity. 
source is where the model is the fbx model is so it's going to import the materials into the unity this particular folder which is good the reason why it's good is because i don't have to start searching for wherever it was imported to or i don't have to start creating i can just reuse the same place now that this has been made for me you notice all these are pretty all this was made by someone also but if you noticed it has actually has almost no details no additional details like metallic map normal map height map occlusion map so on all right uh, i'm not going to do that in this video i'm not going to show you guys how to get all this in this video but for those of you that are good with photoshop you can also use photoshop to get all this i believe i've showed you guys photoshop here you use your photoshop to get all this for example i use my photoshop sometimes to get materials i need for my game so it's up to you guys guys you just have to do it one or two tutorials and you're good to go i mean when it comes to any photoshop it's quite easy if you want to use photoshop for making your the things the textures you need for your game it's quite easy it's a different task from learning photo editing so um now that i have fixed one of my buildings okay um this is too small by the way we're going to just bump this up um, and we are going to drag this down bring this in since this is a road bring this in bump this down zoom in okay let's go this way let's go this way like this is okay mm, we decide to bury the road it is it makes sense that way we can bury the road it makes sense let's just bury the road yeah what do you guys think yeah let's bury the road uh, let me see if we could get all this one by one so I'll know if I can fix the car separately. Okay, good, I could. Since I could, it makes more sense to bury the rest down. Alright, so all that's been done. Let's go to the other house. I'm going to do just don't just follow me. You'll be doing your own um be bringing in your own material, okay? Your own asset into this scene. I thought I did this, so I think I did, yeah. Okay. So it has, let me see, it has a texture. Have I imported materials? All right, let's import the materials. Okay, object, okay, let's see. It doesn't have a texture, nice. Okay, this could be, scale this down. If you can't see the building, then something is wrong. Mine was quite, Hmm. All right, I'm going to just steal this really low so it can be usable in my Let's see where is the front? Okay, this is the front All right, so So this is here so as you can see all this look unrealistic and that's because you don't have a material for some of this um some of this all right so having a material like uh, having the um extra details the extra textures for these materials would help to reduce um so many unrealistic things but right now without the normals the height the occlusion and like metallic we could do some extra work or some primary work that could help us remove some unrealistic looks in this and that could be the smoothness map if you notice the difference of this building you can see it all right um it would make sense to leave this as something reflected because the um of course the walls are kind of the walls are tiled all right the walls are tiled so it makes sense to leave it metallic if you want to so i'm going to leave this metallic mm let's say which one this belongs to so this is the floor it doesn't make sense to make the floor metallic all right because it's wood all right 
Although they kind of made the mistake some models make is that they make um, different textures in a, in one texture, and that is really bad because it messes up the realistic thinking that you want to try and um, you want to try and implement in your game. For example, uh, concrete should be concrete shouldn't be um, that um, concrete could be your tiles could be shiny, but your wood should not be shiny. But since they made it together i'm going to go i'm going to support my wood all right my wooden floor should not be shiny i don't want that if i want it to be shiny at least it should be a little bit shiny i get it or oh, not shiny at all but let's leave it at well not shiny at all or oh, okay let's leave it at a little bit shiny 0 0.1 we'll come back to why we have some kind of errors i don't like it but that's just the bounce of skylight so now we've worked on that material let's come to this material let's see what belongs to this let's see where it belongs to mm, I did it glass of the stairs let me see I did it glass of the stairs all right we can leave this bump this up a little bit okay mm, then this the last one Mm, okay, let's leave it at that. All right, we've walked with that one. Let's come to this one and make sure that everything is okay with it. Um, materials, smoothness is, let's see, the roof. As the roof should not be okay, just a little bit of reflection would be okay. Should be more metallic because let's say this is an issue. They made the roof together with the wooden part, which isn't good. All right, our roof should be different so we can make significant changes to it. For example, we want it to be bricks, we want it to be metal, we want it to be any other stuff. So these are accounts things you should take into account when importing a material into your a. a model in rather a model rather into your project we're really going behind time right now but we are almost done with the game so anyway let's just leave it like that let's not go into much of detail let's save ourselves some extra time and explanation all right so we have this down let's go into um maybe trees add your tree okay you know what i did now i did click the edit tree button add tree Click on this circle here, this circle and the dot inside. It's simply telling you to browse. It means browse, all right? So you click on this, then just click, simply type tree. Unfortunately, we don't have any trees then. Um, no trees were important, so we won't use trees. So we just, since there is no, I don't have any tree, I'm not going to use trees. But if you have trees, you could use trees. Add grass texture. Let me see if I have grass textures. Grass. Nope, I don't have 2D grass, all right? This are just the terrain's grass. You can use this for grass details. We can do that at the ending of the of the tutorial if there is still time. But let's make this game now, all right, guys? <coughs> so we're going to begin. Let's first of all begin by putting this into order, all right? Create empty. We want to classify the buildings separately. Let's call them city buildings. Buildings. Okay, always don't oh, don't forget guys always reset this to zero. It's always important to do so <coughs> Reset to zero drag it up this and This Drag them into city buildings. All right, then we have the rocks. Yes, um, classify the rocks under Environment All right, reset All right, once you reset every new object you create or put into this place will be taken to that parent position it helps for positioning all right so now let's create another empty inside this we could decide to write it as rocks or details but for now we'll go with rocks so you just simply select all your rocks drag it on the rocks and we have more space to do our work then we can go deeper into creating what we call uh, game level all right or whatever you want to call it and then you now drag this 
under it, all right? And then we have our terrain as well. Take note of that. Your terrain should be under environment, all right? So that has been covered. So it looks like we just have three things on our hierarchy. That's a neat job. So let's begin. Create empty one more time. We call this system. All right, reset again. This is what we're going to do in all our work. Now let's create an empty trigger. All right, so let's begin by clicking on um, cube, 3D object cube. The reason why I'm using cube uh, is because I need to know where my cube is. By the way, if your terrain is smaller than this, for this cube looking this big, it simply means that right now we are working on a very, very, very micro game. All right, so take note of this when important things. Sometimes taking note of your scale is very important as this might affect the performance and function of your um function of your game. So you should, you should know about that so you make mistakes in your game. From time to time and questions you have for me, I'll be able to show you guys more about that. Okay, let's just see if we can. Where's my camera? By the way, my main camera looks so big. Um, my main camera looks so big. I think I should try and scale it down. Let me see if I can scale my camera down. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't change the fact that it's just there. You can scale it. All right, so let's just continue working for now. Come back to that. So this is my first trigger. I want this trigger to happen whenever my camera comes to this building. Okay, we have our bus collider. FSN. <coughs> mm, trigger. Trigger. Mm, trigger. Mm, trigger event. Okay, we want to have a collision, colliding effect right now. We'll talk about main cameras. This is main camera we're using. I'm going to be using FPS, first person. FPC, rather, first person camera. So, UI event, system event. Trigger enter okay. Create a new control, control left click to create a new state, or you could just right click, add state. Um, drag this in. All right, who are we detecting since this game object has a collider and we enable this to a trigger? Then we can say it's the owner, but if we if we didn't want to use this um, cube as the trigger event we will have to specify by specify game object as i told you guys always take note of that all right to trigger load scene load scene all right to load a scene you first of all have to add the scene to what we call um the scenes in view all right right now it's just a sample scene and I won't be needing a sample scene, so I'm going to remove this and I'm going to put in my scenes. This is my first level and future levels I put in, I will, future levels I create, I'm going to put them here as well to enable me to be able to load my scenes. But you can't load your scenes if you know if you can't load your scenes with this script if you don't have them kept in that windows I showed you right now. So we want the player to whenever he enters this trigger, he's able to like go to a new level um leave it at symbol scene at index or scene by name we use index the numbers are quite easier to remember so truly the scene was loaded uh -huh. really scene was loaded truly the scene was loaded okay let's say the success event we won't use the success event we won't use any of this we know it's going to load all right but let's just say maybe failure to load Mm, yeah, let's use failure to load. Control click again. Failure to load. Always be organized, guys, so you can remember. You just say failed to load. Create it. Click this. Gives you your transition. All right. These are what we call transitions. Transist to this. Transist to this. And then we want it to um. 
what happens is you don't actually have to open a new scene telling you to um figure to load you try to load again just simply carry the same thing again copy paste fails to load again then let's just see um, it goes back all right so we just help the player to retry loading again but if it doesn't load again then it takes him back to he has to enter and exit again all right um to save time i won't go in, into a lot of that but we're going to just do it this way um then and yeah i don't think i'll be able to make the bank this this time but you get get a catch so let me just quickly create a new scene new scene all right um this is going to be my control s to save this is going to be my house call it whatever you want to call it but this is the house i want this to be the house i'll declare enter into the house I'm go to build setting look for my house drag my house into the build setting as well and take note of your index index zero is the previous scene one is this scene so we're going to go into the previous um level once again all right and we are going to click this all right edit the reason why the cube is still visible is because i want to know where my cube is i mean of course this is uh, this is visible this gives more like it looks like it's in chinese data it's visible you can see it from anywhere i believe but i just love to have a cube there so i know where my colliders enter where my colliders stop it's easier for me to see them that way and make a right um precision or a right guess of where the player will pass or not so remember to change this to one or what how many things you have change it to that amount okay so we've done that uh now we've done that we're just going to control s always country s guys okay we've done that so we can now decide to remove the mesh renderer remove component actually the mesh render doesn't really matter as long as you kept this to its trigger the collider it means the player is just going to pass through the the cube all right and yeah um that's what will happen but since it will make sense we have to remove the the mesh renderer to show this as a collider so now we have this as a collider well, let me come to my camera and i'm going to add a, a collider to my camera to do this is a camera and it has nobody we should go with a spare collider or as you guys know it box collider so we'll go with um capsule we usually use capsules uh, we don't by default have a spare or single collider so look for capsule target as a trigger and then by increasing the radius or reducing the radius it will be considered a collider so we want this to you want this to go through this trigger event you have to do, do not put it as a trigger all right it's a collider it means that it collides with whatever comes this way for example if you have a, a block in front of it or a box in front of it the camera can't pass through anymore so then we just need to adjust the height of this um it's already at its lowest anyways so let's just see if it's good enough all right it's good enough i mean it's good enough but we might want to reduce this okay so i think we might have to scale up this terrain um we have to scale up the terrain if this game if this camera can go through so but anyways it's a camera we don't have to worry about the scale in front now since we're using a camera but if you're working with an actual character make sure to always do your scaling because it's really important by default to use one one but most of the things here we have are below one so um let's also just remove this if possible just delete it because this prevents you always that i deleted always prevents you from using your mouse in the game all right so we've made that let's quickly do one more thing um we didn't talk about the ui um let's create a ui um what was it where is the image raw image let's use image all right the, the image i created the other time the image i downloaded rather the other time where is it they did it even download oh it didn't it didn't download Let's just do for suit. Suit. Okay, look 
from them. What? I mean, I thought it's done then. Alright, let's come back here. Don't be fast with this. Where is it? Done rooms. Um, this is it. Menu soup. Where is it? I mean, it's here yeah, somewhere. It's not trying to open mm. shrink folder. Where did you download to? Textures? Why? Anyways, let's just go. Anyways, I don't even know how you got there, but let's just go. Alright, so you add this. Alright. By default, you have this kind of background. A texture, if you want to have a UI, we have a UI and then we have images. Alright. For images, leave the texture as it is. But if you want to use this as a UI event, a UI um, um, texture, change it to spirit and sprite 2D and UI, all right? Sometimes um, you could also change images to sprite. I'm going to drop this down to 102. All right, it's pretty too much. Always take note of this because the size you put this in can really affect, it can really affect um, the size of your game and it can make your game slow, it can make your game fast, it can make your game large. So, all right, I have my image. You see an image here, okay? So we have a canvas, yes. Um, for the canvas, I'm going to use um scale with screen size. Okay, by default we have this setting 800 by 60 and match. The match is simply telling you like how do you want us to deal with? It? Do you want us to just focus on width or do you want us to just focus on height but i want them to focus on both so i'm going to put it in the middle 0.5 all right so with that done i'm going to now put this to um the top the top left rather which i can do by pressing alt always use alt guys alt and then um, left click all right on this and then it takes me to where i want it or then wherever it, i want it and then to just make some further adjustment to it, you just double click. It brings you out to where it is in the in the game view. Let's just show you guys what's going on here. And for editing of um, images, don't use this tool. Use this tool. This is the tool used for uh, edit, editing of sprites. All right. So you go, for example, bring it out. You can see this those calculation to show you that it's used for sprite or sprite, whatever you guys call it. Um, so now we've done that, we want to now put in our texture, which is this. You just simply drag it to the source image, okay? Source image. As you can see, this, this turned out to not be transparent anyways. So since it wasn't transparent, then... Um, but make sure yours is transparent, dude. Let me see if I can do something about that. So yeah, mine wasn't transparent. So if yours is transparent, um, make sure you do that. Uh, yep, mine isn't transparent. All right, so guys, that's it about that. To save more time, let's just, we're almost done with our game, by the way. Um, now let's go to our main camera, okay? We are going to add, um, since we're using camera, it's pretty simple, Unity has this, um by default camera controller all right so let's look for camera use simple camera controller all right so click that let's bump this up to 150 all right so and let's click this invert y all right i don't know why it's an invert by default unity makes it going up down which is stupid so they want us to invert it back to its normal way so now we've done that, let's now say, okay, we're good to go with that. Let's just have, let's, we'll talk about some other things later in the other coming um, games, okay, but for now, let's just um, go to our other scene. Let's go to our house, we want to put in a plane. Okay, locate your plane, all right, change it back to the normal editing of 3D um, tools. Um, you want to make your plane? Let's add a cube. Cube, all right. So, 
we have this by the way just put this as our cube okay save bring your main camera game object align with view add this simple camera edit and we're done exactly one hour okay let's say one hour one minute all right change this to 150 all right guys so like i promised you guys this is one hour game all right a one hour game if you guys like it and would like to make more games with me simply um ask questions in the in the post guys i like it when you guys ask questions if you ask questions it means that you guys are following up and if you guys are following up it means that i'll be able to teach you guys a lot more all right i'll be able to teach you guys a lot more we can do together but for now this is where we'll stop the class i'm afraid we'll have to end it here and uh, please pay attention in your game jam okay in your game jam team if you know one or two things you can try to contribute with them but there is a catch to um there's a catch to knowing um there's a catch to um knowing visual scripting many people not many people really see visual scripting as something big deal but it's a big deal because they don't actually know how to work with it all right so they might not want to work with you thinking that you don't know what you're doing all right they might not want to work with you thinking that you don't know what you are doing but let's fix this mm. where is my game level my system my trigger cube come to cube cube Oh, I, I believe maybe we should just make this camera a lot bigger this cube a lot bigger because of my scale so let's just be sure about that that this is working As you can see, something is wrong with my. Okay, we're going to do something else. Okay, let's just come a little bit back to my camera. The script. I noticed that my camera game object doesn't really. They don't really take note of it, so let's create a cube rather. Oh no. Where is it? A spare rather. Alright. Let's create a spare. It already has its own collider. Let's put our let's put our camera inside this pair. Okay, to do that, let's just click this and click align with view. All right. Oh no, come on, not this. Okay, let's take the main camera as well. Align with view. All right. So now the camera is inside now let's make this main camera a parent of our spare uh, uh, our fair rather so now we have a body okay now let's name this to the main camera tag doesn't really work i noticed that it's strange but well, let's see if this will work okay so play you don't have to use this trigger anymore, I believe. You could just disable this for now. Okay. Let's check it one more time. Oh, and with this... Oh, we we'll have to make it the other way around because of um, the simple camera controller script. I won't be able to move with this inside. I'll well, be able to move, but it's just going to leave... It's going to leave the, the cube. So let's just fix this again bring this out bring this in all right so now we're going to talk about main camera moving is moving everything together so play the game oh my guys and i promised you guys one hour game and yeah we've passed that one hour section i'm sorry about that but i'm trying to be fast about this now okay mm -hmm. so okay now let's move you can see it's moving really fair. Let's see what happens. It still didn't go in, which is strange. Okay. Wait. 
so all right i i figured out the issue okay i figured out the issue and the issue was that um with some trial and errors the issue was that i don't know if this is an update or something but based on the fact that i haven't been using some part of the playmaker for a while i'm kind of getting old <laughs> all right so um i'm just going to do this right after we did this we did this yeah um let's put our camera once again into this um sphere this fair i noticed that this um script this function doesn't work with the camera moving on its own all right because that's kind of like the god view this type of camera controller is not a player it's a god view controller like the controller that you're meant to use for just testing and that doesn't work with colliders and other stuff like that it's just a god view mode helps you walk around so if you want to actually have a realistic um feel into the whole situation just simply remove this once again we finish tutorial but trying to speed this up and fix this issue remove this component all right so remove this component as well you don't need it all right let's come back to our sphere remove this sphere collider you don't need it we are going to create an FSM. All right, for this fair, we are going to move the fair as an actual character. Okay, let's call it movement. Okay, and then we are going to call this. Um, we're going to add a character controller for this because it we want to consider it a player, right? So we want to also consider gravity. By default, by default, this script gives you gravity. We have the one for rigid body but this is not a rigid body so now we've added our script so let's come all the way click the edit button opens the playmaker window all right we're going to do something pretty simple we're going to get assets vector this get assets vector it's assets or a6 vector it's simple simply just saying that you should get the current position of the object all right for example we want to get the current position of this fair wherever it is it's always going to get the current position all right and then it's going to store it it could be in a global variable it could be in a local variable a global variable means that anywhere within the project the whatever is stored the value is stored to be accessible it could be in a different scene it could be wherever else it will be accessible that's what global means but local means that it's only in this scene only in this scene that this local can be accessible and it might not even be asset, uh, accessible from within some scripts all right so let's just go with local which would create a um, location location all right that's pretty much it for this and then we're just going to create double click again with left double click um, or you can just click action browser like before, like usual we're going to click um, get asset no not get asset actually controller okay controller controller simple move or right, we have some other different movement as well so we are going to now um refer we're going to now reference this stored location of our our fare to this controller to get this to let this controller know where we currently are and from that position we want to move in whatever direction we want to move in as we press our arrow keys okay with a speed of one so you now reference that to that location to get the xyz location the xyz location all right so now that that is done you notice the the fair falling down all right you notice the fall falling down once we play the game Another thing to take note of is this cube, all right? Make sure it is triggered. In the cube, you want the fair to go through, all right? So now that we've done that, uh, I'm now going to move inside. I'm going to move inside, okay? Where is it taking note of this big ball here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are going to, we are getting to the cube. Alright. Watch what happens. It takes us to our new scene. This is our new scene. So we're in, we, let's just assume we are inside the house. Alright. 
So guys, that, that is it for it. I'm just going to go into a quick advice for you guys. For those of you that are going into visual scripting, I want to know, I want to let you know that if you would like to continue this project, um, we might have serious, we might have big projects in the future. If you guys would like to continue with visual scripting, we might team up and make games together. Um, but if you guys would like to continue with this, I want you guys to know that sometimes, um, number one is that you won't find job opportunities with this for now because companies are still looking into programmers and and um, coders all those kind of guys are into that are you getting it so it's advisable for you to also learn um coding so you can learn one of the coding classes but if you want to be an indie game dev and you're sure that you can survive being an indie game dev what's an indie game dev an indie game dev is someone that works on his own but not under a company all right and that's what i am i work on my own not under a company and i'm still encouraged to make my game that has that has not stopped me from making a game so if you like to do that you can also you can continue with these tutorials and learn more about visual scripting i am going to drop you um a recommendation for you guys in the post um of a guy that i once learned from um by the way he's no more making any active videos but to where to where he stopped in the videos he has made is more than enough for you to learn a lot from it and it's pretty straightforward okay so you guys take your time and then um watch these tutorials and ask me questions please ask questions if you don't ask questions there is no way i will know that you guys are learning or are not learning so i won't be able to adjust my mode of teaching or be able to continue making videos for you guys because i'll believe you guys are not active so if you're active only there's one person asking the questions i will be willing to help you to solve that issue all right don't ask me questions of coding you want to ask questions of coding the person to ask questions of coding we have we're going to be having more than three tutors that are dealing with coding Even we are going to be we are planning on having a tutor that are dealing with coding in turkish language so you guys can ask all these tutors questions concerning coding and programming right now my field is just visual scripting all right take care guys and thanks for watching